Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, the amplified version. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, Let the word, the spoken word by Christ the Messiah, have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness as you teach and admonish and train one another in all insights and intelligence and wisdom in spiritual things and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs making melody to God with his grace in your hearts. Somebody shout hallelujah. But underline for me let the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all its richness. Underline that. In all its richness. The KJV says, may the word of Christ, may the message, may that gospel dwell in you richly. Hallelujah. He says, may the word of Christ dwell in you richly. The Amplified says, may the word spoken by Christ the Messiah have its home in your hearts and minds and dwell in you in all richness. Paul is telling the church, it's like a prayer as well as an instruction. But may the word of God dwell in you richly. And if you read the Greek word there for richly, it's abundantly. In fact, the literal Greek word there for richly also has the word wealthy. He says, may the word of God dwell in you in such a wealth. May you get to a point where the thing inside you, the thing coming out of you is wealthy, and it is the word. May the word of God dwell wealthily in you. May the word of God be your wealth. Hallelujah. He says, ah, uh-uh, don't worry about houses and cars, buildings. No, 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 no. He said, may the word of God dwell in you wealthily. May the word of God become your wealth. May it be everything that defines wealth. He's saying that the church has got to shift from the normal predictable laxity. The comfort zones that scratch the simple in the things of God. That when they meet you, you start speaking. No, you're not confessing one revelation that excited you on Tuesday morning. No. But you are confessing the wealth of the word. And that is where we're going. We are going in a space not far from now. Where you meet somebody and they are Nasha. And they open a revelation in Thessalonians. And you're like, wow. Are you an usher? Are you sure you're an usher? Just a church member? The those days are come. Hallelujah. Well, those, you mean you just attend? Did you go to Bible school? No. Which books do you read? Hallelujah. They'll ask you, which, which compendium are you reading? Which expository dictionaries are you reading? Which commentaries are you consulting? What is coming out of you? Hallelujah. Why? Because you are the fulfillment of, may the word of Christ dwell in you richly. And in studying that word, in understanding the things that I want to share tonight, I went through scripture and my eyes started to walk eternally. And I could see why the church must receive the word and allow it to settle home richly. You know, sometimes there's some people who teach and say, you must have a word for every situation. That is reactionary. That is not the Christian life. The Christian life does not react to situations as though for one to store something up that when a situation comes, eh, you apply this. And so what do you do? You classify. eh? The kinds of problems in the world you could ever meet. Poverty. Then you put down scriptures of poverty. Against. Then sickness. Then you put down scriptures of sickness. Then joy and peace and all this. Then you put down, you know. So when you're in trouble, 
scriptures when I'm in trouble. Eh? You know, there are people who, who have books like that. Scriptures when I'm in trouble. Then they have like 20. You understand? Scriptures when I feel broke. Then they have like 20. Scriptures when I don't feel loved or when I feel rejected. Then they put about five or six. Scriptures when I feel like I'm delayed. Then they put about five or six. That is you preparing, you know, machinery, weaponry. Waiting for when the devil comes in and then you say, aha, uh -huh, isn't it written? Which is okay. It is all okay. It is all okay. That is okay. You're better than someone who doesn't know what to do when they're in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? Because there are people, even when they're praying and they're in trouble, they don't know which scripture to use. But God is not trying to raise a reactionary church. No. He wants to raise a body that is proactive. It is so prepared so prepared, so ready for anything because you have matured in the things of God. Somebody shout, Amen. God wants to raise a people who are so mature in the Word. Are you hearing me? That when you start speaking, even beauty starts to create itself around you. The things around you start catching attention. People who are just next to you start to come to say, can you say that again? You are just having a conversation with somebody over tea. But the things you're sharing over tea, they're attracting even the person who are seated next. Somebody shout, Amen. Say glory to God. One time I was having tea with somebody years ago. And as we were having tea, and then I started sharing things, and then the person with me were all laughing and sharing mysteries. And then there was this chap in the corner like this. And then he had, and then he was alone drinking tea as well. Then just after a few minutes, he says, is it okay if I join you guys? I said, excuse me? He said, stop you speaking. Is it okay that I, I join you? And I said, yeah. So he comes and then brings together his chair. Just right there. A guy we met in a restaurant. He says, you know, I was not been studying this thing. And I was asking myself, do you know your God says? Eh? Uh -huh. Now let me ask. Eh? He starts asking questions. And as we are giving answers, I'm like, look at what God is doing. Because of the word of God that is working in our life. Somebody shout, amen. Somebody say, the word of God dwells in me richly. Yes. God wants to raise a generation that is so deep that you even intimidate. You're so deep that you intimidate. You speak things and people say, wait, 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 wait. Then they go back to the Bible again. Like they never read it. Somebody shout, Amen. Glory to God. And now God says, see, this is where the church is supposed to be. This is where the church is supposed to be. This is where you were called to be. The reason why people are sickly, struggling, striving, fighting things that are not living, going through situations that never end, having endless battles and troubles. It is because we have not taught men enough wealth in the world to know how to fight when the man of God has not answered your call. The Bible says he sent his word and he healed them all and delivered them from their destructions. That's all you need. Hallelujah. Whatever can destroy you, whatever would have destroyed you, would not be able to destroy you because the Lord sent his word. Some things are so easy that we complicate them. He said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's what he did. He knew that mankind would struggle and strike and fight in this world and have all these kinds of testations as well. He said, you know what? Let me send my word. And when I send my word, the Bible says, I will deliver them from all their destructions. It means when a man has allowed the word of God to dwell in them richly, it doesn't matter what comes. That means stuff won't come. It only means... There's something in your life that can fix it. Somebody shout, Amen. And trying to give you a remedy for something. You know, I used to a generation that is dull. The spirits of men are dull. They want the message only in the version of a good story. You understand? It? They want to go around Jericho every year. I'm not saying it's not a revelation. 
but I know people who every year they are going around Jericho, but the walls are not falling. They are swinging stones to Goliaths that are not dying. They are waiting for Uzziah to die so they can see the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? In the ark, King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord. Something has to die. And then you see the Lord. May it die. 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 die, die. And then people are killing Uzziah. They are killing Uzziah. Listen, that was a year of reference. It was just a year of reference for him to say that particular year when you say, like you said that in the year when Kabaka Mutesa reigned, this happened. So yes, in the year Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. That doesn't mean that Isaiah is saying that Uzziah has to die for him to see the Lord. But some people have a doctrine around that. She Uzziah, cho, that Uzziah, it should do. die. Then you see the Lord. Then you see people, kill that Uzziah. Then people start to kill Uzziah. Uzziah, die. Uzziah of poverty, die. Uzziah of weakness. Die. Uzziah of sickness. Uzziah of headache and flu. Die. Uzziah of dust. Die. Uzziah of bad politics. Die. Uzziah of corruption. <laughs> Uzziah does not need to die for you to see the Lord. So I'm not saying that I'm against revelation, but sometimes we are too shallow that even Satan laughs in our services. You understand what I'm saying? God has called you to a wealth. Hallelujah. And so because of that, even the things that are supposed to be simple become complicated. And because of that, even as we read the Bible, it is not revealed as it must. For he says the word of God is with no effect. It's with no effect. Because it's interpreted in traditions, it's interpreted in doctrines of men, it's interpreted in the understandings, the minds of men, and not the revelation of Jesus Christ. One man sang and said, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Many times we forfeit peace. Many times we lose the peace and joy we're supposed to have in Jesus. Because we don't know how to relate to the Word of God. The Word of God can fix anything. A young man met me this week from uh, the live stream of Ishaka. They tell me of this fellow who has been carrying HIV for a couple of years and so he comes to the fellowship, they're praying for him every time. They're praying, they're praying, they're praying, they're praying. And so this young man gets this fellow and tells him, there's something called a faith series. Have you heard about it? He says no. And they gave this guy the faith series. Five teachings. The guy listened and listened and listened. Next day he said, no, let's go for a checkup. I think I'm healed. I know I am. So the young man the other day was in my office telling me, they checked the fellow and checked him 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 and checked him. He just can't find it. He just can't find it. He just can't find it. Are you hearing me? They just can't find it. One time I got the same series to a lady with stage 4 cancer. And the lady listened to this thing and went back to the doctors and she sent me a message while she was out of the country and says, Apostle, there is no trace of cancer in my body. Now the doctors are asking themselves, what happened? And I told her, tell them it was the word. You know, when big things happen, eh, take opportunity. Some of you, they tell you, how come you don't fall sick? You tell them, it's the genes. No, it's not the genes. Are you hearing me? No, hallelujah. When they say, how come you're healthy, you tell them, Rakatula Baya. It's the word of God. What do you mean it's the word of God? Listen to the faith series. You'll not fall sick. Somebody shout, Amen. And like there is for health, there is also for wealth, there is also for breakthrough. There's also... Just keep applying yourself. Every time you're coming here on Thursday, you're storing. 
Are you hearing me? You're like an ant under incubation. Every Thursday, every Sunday you're listening. You're putting something inside your store. Are you hearing me? You're storing wealth and riches in your spirit. And when stuff comes, who will find you ready. I say it will find you ready. Say amen. What is the word? What is the word? What is the word? Proverbs chapter 5 verses 1. He says, my son, be attentive to my wisdom. Amplified. Godly wisdom learned by actual and costly experiences. And he says, and incline your ear to my understanding of what is becoming and put for you. He says that you may exercise proper discrimination and discretion, and your lips may guard and keep knowledge and the wise answer to temptation. He says, for the lips of a loose woman drip honey as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but in the end she is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged and devouring sword, and her feet go down to death, and her steps take hold of Sheol, which is hell, the place of the dead. She loses sight of the walks not in the path of life, her ways wind about aimlessly and you cannot know her and he's talking about a strange woman a loose woman and he's warning the sun and this loose woman is not just the physical individual of a woman if you leave it there you lose the revelation the man of wisdom likened a two-edged sword to the spirit of deception that was at work in the loose woman he was warning his son about. And how that then turns her feet down to death and steps take a hold of hell because in her there is aimlessness and there is no sight of the paths of life. And so he's talking about this strange woman, but the strange woman is not only the physical self of a loose woman, the physical representation of a, a female who's loose, right? It's more than that. The writer is trying to bring a deeper wisdom here, okay? Because of course we're going to say, hey, are they only loose women? No, no, he's talking about something deeper than what the eye can see. And it's something I want to show you because what is surrounding this woman is a spirit and what is surrounding that spirit is deception. And the writer of scripture tells you that the spirit of deception is a two-edged sword. Are you following? So in here, the two-edged sword represents deception. So when you go in Hebrews chapter 4 verses 12, that is why the Bible doesn't say that the word of God is as sharp as a two-edged sword. No, he says, but the word that speaks is alive and full of power, making it operative, energizing and effective. He says, it is sharper. He didn't say that the word of God is as sharp as a two-edged sword. Give me the KJV. No, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. That means he's saying that this word, this particular word, is sharper than any deception are you hearing me it's beyond deception the word of God is flawless it's without error even the scriptures say in other words it's the beginning of everything true in it there is no deception there is no misleading there is no error there is no fault. When God says, I love you, it is true. When God says you are healed, it is true. Who has understood what I'm trying to say? But even deeper than that, when the writer of Hebrews 4.12 is speaking about the word being a double-edged sword, supper, the Greek word there for supper, the word they're used for supper, is likened to an experience of someone hacking something, somebody trying to cut through something. And the word there, supper, also directly means one which cuts with one single cut, regardless of how hard the thing is. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Regardless of how hard something is, regardless of how complicated something is, regardless of how 
speak something is. She says this one, it just cuts once. You don't need to say, no, no, this one, whatever it means, whether it is metal, are you hearing me? Whether it's titanium, it doesn't matter how hard it is. Whatever it finds, this one hacks once and goes through. You know what this one does? It works, it's active. It is energized enough to execute on its first evocation. It's fast enough. It's powerful enough to bring the results on its first indulgence. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. You know, it's very interesting. Father, change. Father, change. Father, change. Father, change. No, you can do that. That's okay. It is okay because you're reconstructing your faith such that at the end of the day you say it once. No, but you're like one which is cutting once, twice, such that the tree goes down. Ah, he says, no, that's not how the word of God is. Hallelujah. God is raising men and women who will get into a situation and say one word and say, Change in the name of Jesus. And everything has to recollect and realign itself to the word that you have spoken because it cuts once and has the results of it. It's a single stroke. One. You don't repeat. Are you hearing me? The word of God is not a wet axe. It's not an axe that is blunt. <laughs> this one. If it gets to cancer, once, cancer, go. Sir, I hear me. HIV, get out of this body. Sir, I hear me. Poverty. Sir, single stroke and poverty is out of the body. Hallelujah. It's out of somebody's life. Hallelujah. Witness. Sir, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? Stupidity. Are you hearing me? Praise God, hallelujah. This one, you just say it once, and God wants you to get to the level of authority where you don't need to repeat yourself. But even the devil knows that when that woman starts speaking, when she says go, she means go. When she says move, she means move. When he says it's changing, it is changing. That's the word of God. It's sharp enough to cut through anything at its first stroke. In other words, the repetitions are to the degree of our deception. He says, do not be like those who repeat their prayers over and over as though the Lord is not hearing them no look at Jesus just look at Jesus just look at Jesus he finds a kid cold in the body from head to toe everything the sinews and muscles are clogged together the blood is dry and the heart is stopped and they're taking out and he says Talitha Kumai I'm not repeating it <laughs> Are you hearing me? And this little girl comes out. Hallelujah. Lazarus, come forth. And I am not. What I've said is enough to enter a tomb of four days death of a body and give it life. That's what I'm trying to say. To get to a point where you don't even waste time with the devil. God wants to get you to a level. Are you hearing me? That when you are repeating, you're repeating other things but not concerning the devil. Who has understood? Get to the level where you say it once, and when you're saying it, and you tell your spirit that I've said it, the next time you repeat it, you're repeating it with thanks. Do you know that today, poverty can leave your house? Today. Today. And we never talk about it. We never discuss it. We never address it. It goes today. Do you know that that disease, that incurable thing in your body and blood, it can walk out today and we never discuss it again. You never talk about it again. You never address it again. Today, I came to declare the power that addresses certain things 
for the last time in your life. I don't care how bad, how hard, how complicated, how you think you think that they think that they say that so far, if you think that they think that they say that she said that he said, it might not work. No, I've come to address the power that addresses things in one strike and you get it right. Somebody thought, amen. If you have one bullet in the gun, that one will have the target that ends the enemy. Are you hearing me? Oh, yeah. I say there is an anointing that is present here that is about to end certain things today. You're not going to repeat them again. You're never going to repeat them again in your prayer. I don't care how crazy that man is. I don't care how crazy your son is. I don't care how crazy situations are, how funny your boss is, how unpredictable your neighbor is. I said, you can decrease something now and heaven starts everything possible for it to come to pass single strike he says that's how much powerful this thing is you see people speaking tongues have i told them to speak in tongues no, because that's the power. That one, you, nobody tells you to stand up. You don't find yourself. You know why? Because it, it cuts. It cuts. It cuts. So I exercise myself in those things. I feel something in my soul and I say, Hey! Stop it. And I'm not going to repeat it. Jesus rebuked the devil and said, get out from him and return no more. I don't care whether he opens another door or he doesn't open another door. I don't care whether after here he's going to mess himself up or not. I have said, this time when you leave him, you don't return back and the devil never returns back. I'm talking about the authority of a believer. He say, come out of him and enter him no more. Meaning this one, regardless of what will happen on him, I have said it, when you reach him, you'll remember that the word that I spoke over her life cannot allow that thing back into her life. That is the church God wants to raise. People who are ready to speak things. And they don't repeat them. I said you will not repeat yourself. I said you will not repeat yourself. I don't care how bad the issue is. I said you will not repeat yourself. You will not even seek a prayer from a man of God. Apostle, pray again. Oh, I don't know how to pray again. Apostle, I know you prayed last time, but can you add more prayers? And usually when I do that, when I ask, I say, Father, I thank you. Because you healed this person long ago, but they don't know. Are you hearing me? I just say it. I say, I thank you. Help them know. Because I can't repeat. When you cast that cancer, the life that day, that particular day, it started to die. But your funny faith, your funny unbelief, your funny thought process started to multiply the cells that you had killed on one strike. Are you hearing me? Just to know that you can say one word and tell your spirit because I have said it. And I believe that it is the word of God. That one has been fixed. What if other things come and they continue attacking you, telling you that but it is still there. That's its problem. Not my problem. Are you hearing me? Those are lying vanities. I can't observe lying vanities. He says, he that observes lying vanities forsakes his own word. Mercy. He rebuked the devil and he says, I won't go, I won't go. When I rebuked you, you're joking. I'm beyond that level. Kick all you want, you will leave. Because I've rebuked you. Do everything you want. The man said Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. Didn't Lazarus die? 
Lazarus died. Yet the Son of God, full of God, said, Lazarus' sickness will not, but that did not move Jesus. He meets them and says, Hey, I am the resurrection. And I'm the life. I love that language. I'm a walking power. I'm a walking miracle. I live a life of favor. Let us just not produce. Let us be the miracle. Let people look at you and you are a miracle. You are, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Am I preaching to somebody? People look at you and they say, that man is a miracle. That woman is a miracle. When people need a miracle, they just need to set your hand. Somebody said, I'm a miracle. Jesus always owned the virtues of the Spirit. He never just spoke of what he does with them, but he also owned them. He says, I am the resurrection. I am the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the I am. He said, I am that I am. I am. I am the bread of life. I am. I am wisdom. I am understanding. I am action. I'm anointing. I'm glory. I'm increase. I'm multiplication. Somebody shout amen. That's who I am. Oh, yeah, so that when the devil sees you and it's on a man, it frees and says, Look at a miracle. Look at a miracle. Men should not come to meetings to see miracles. No. The moment they meet us, somebody says, When I see a miracle, I'll get born again. Aha. Uh -huh. They meet you. You open your mouth and tell them, receive Christ. Single strike. Okay, okay, okay. Somebody said amen. In the book of Acts, when the Spirit of the Lord comes on the church and they're speaking in tongues, Peter stands before 3,000 men and speaks. After speaking, the second chapter, the 37th verse, the Amplified says, and when they had this, they were stung, and in brackets, cut to the heart, and they say to Peter, and the rest of the apostles, the special messengers, brethren, what shall we do? That is power. One someone. One someone. Change 3,000 men in one day. Single strike. And they're asking, what should we do? That is the power that makes you do, you know the English people say, you hit two birds with one stone. This one hits a million with one. Because it's enough to cut through the million and still have precision according to your level of faith. Christians don't hit two birds with one stone. Christians hit as many. For I can do all things by Christ which strengthens me. Count your number for every strike. Somebody shout amen. Shout amen. And then he says something in the second Timothy chapter two, verses nine. He says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. This is Paul in prison, even on two bounds. But he says, But the word of God is not bound. He says, the word is not bound. He says, I might be in bonds now and suffer trouble. But he says, but the word of God, he says, is not bound. He didn't say it's not in bonds. He says it's not bound. This one can't be arrested. It can't be stopped. It can't be frustrated. Nothing can cut it. Nothing can fail it. Nothing. 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 Because it is sharper than any bondage. It is quicker than any bondage. It's not sharp as a tool. No, a good sword. It is sharper than any tool. That means anything made by men, it is sharper. Any deception made by the devil, it is still sharper. It shines brighter than any light. And then he says, 
in first peter 1 he says being born again not of corruptible seed but of the incorruptible seed which is the word of god which liveth and abideth forever he says you are born of that thing that cannot be bound it's not only in you when god was looking for the raw materials to make you he got them from something that cannot be bound he got the material of the word he got the material of something that cannot be bound and he made the dna of the new creation meaning it is impossible for you to be bound and then he gets the sharper edged sword are you hearing me and then puts it in a believer and then he tells the believer that you can get the sharpest there is of the edged sword and he says and you can divide it <laughs> <laughs> okay, in the 15th verse, same scripture, he goes and says, study to show thyself approved unto God. He says, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. You handle, the way you handle it is you, you this is so sharp that it cuts through anything. And he said, but that one, you can still divide it. Who has understood? If you haven't, put up your hand and I explain it again. Okay, I'm saying this is the word. Okay? This one. Let's just say it's the two edged sword, this edge. And he says, you have the ability to also <laughs> divide that one in its smallness and enter there. And he says, if you have the ability to enter, you will not be ashamed. Who am I preaching to? Do you know what it means to divide a divider? Do you know the ability to judge judgment? And he says, that's what I've given you. If you learn to cut through the thing that cuts through everything he says you'll never be ashamed can i repeat it again if you learn to cut through the thing that cuts through everything he says you will never be ashamed when you start a business you can't be ashamed when you start a ministry you can't be ashamed when you enter marriage you can't be ashamed when you produce children you can't be ashamed when you go to a job you can't be ashamed when you declare something you can't be ashamed he said when you understand this you'll never be ashamed and that's what happens to the disciples the apostles of jesus christ they get to the word allow it to consume them until they get in a realm where they cannot explain who they are explain the occasions that are surrounding their life in Acts chapter 5 it begins by expressing a place where an enemy sufferer they deceive the apostolic and they're cast dead because there's a lot of power there and in the 12th verse the word of God continued dwelling in them. He says, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's spot. Now, as I'm reading, imagine that time where the church is under too much anointing that even men die by sentences. One word, they'll bury you. Poo. They don't repeat it. I say they'll bury you. I say they'll bury No, they just say they're going to bury you. The hands that took your wife, the feet that took your wife out are taking you out as well, your husband as well. Boom, you understand? 
Why were mighty signs and miracles done? They declared one thing, and it was so. They got to a level where whatever they spoke, they just had to speak it once. And the power of God is available to execute regardless of the situation. And now the apostles are doing signs, miracles, and wonders, and of the rest of the dust, not man joined himself to them, but the people magnified them. In other words, people feared them, but some of the people outside feared to join them because they were unpredictable. Have you got any situation where the anointing on you scares? People even fear to join you, not because they don't want to, but they don't know where to begin from. They don't know where to begin from. Not because they don't want to, but they don't know how. They fear to join you because you are too strange in the anointing of God operating on your life. I would rather be strange. Me, I would rather be there. Are you hearing me? And then he continues to say, And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick on the streets, and laid them on beds and coaches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some. Do you know at what point the shadow is healing? The word of God is so on the man, that even his shadow has started to carry the essence of the word of life. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Where the anointing of God and the word richly in you, even goes around everything that touches your person. That's why I said, it's not far, and I believe it's begun, when men will park cars next to lame men, and lame men will walk. Because even the essence of their possession has enough power to strike once and get the result. That was what was on Paul when God brought special miracles by him that the hand is touching him on the sick and them that were palsied, demon possessed, were all healed. It is because the word of God, once it richly dwells on you, you had the Marara in the crusade. The man was taken before my poster and his eyes opened. And some people just came to see the man whose poster opens blind eyes. And yet this is just the beginning. Some came on the crusade to see the man whose poster opens blind eyes. And that's where you are. Those are the things that are going to be said of you. That the moment her name was mentioned, call Rita, call Rebecca, boom, the miracle began. A Muslim woman had a swollen leg for years. And they told her, call that man. They gave her my number. So she called, called, failed to get through. Called, called, failed to get through. And when I saw the number, I said, hello. And then I said, Whoa! I said, what's wrong? She hung up. So she calls the man who gave her my number and said, the moment he said hello, my leg just... Now, she didn't know how to talk to me again. Commending ourselves to the consciousness of men. By speaking the truth. But even the clothes you're wearing. I told of a story of a girl who has given my shirt to iron. Somebody gave a lady my shirt to iron years ago. And then when she got my shirt, boom, the demon hit her. She starts rolling. And the demon starts speaking on her mouth. We don't iron sets of such men of God. We don't iron sets of such men of God. We don't iron sets of such men of God. You get to a point where even the devil knows that that is Patrick's shoe. I don't know whether the Son of God shall find faith when he comes. Oh, glory to God. Things are going to start responding. Everything connected to you will be able to perform a miracle. If you believe it, shout amen. If you believe it, shout amen. One more time, shout amen. 
The woman started shaking. She shook. She fell down. They called me. Oh, the girl. She's possessed. She's possessed. Why? Demons can't iron my shirt. Now, imagine those ones in African culture who say, ah, that one, they picked her hair and then bewitched her. The day you touch Apostle Grace's hair, salvation will come in your shrine. The day they pick your nails, fire will burn that whole village. The day they mention your name to a witch doctor, the witch doctor will have a heart attack and a stroke. Somebody shout amen. Tell your neighbor, children of God, are not a joke. Someone steals your property. Angels come and tell him you stole a woman's property. Take it back. We shall direct you. Those are the days. These are the days. I say these are the days. I say these are the days. These are the days. I wish somebody takes this thing. Yeah. 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 Now it doesn't matter how wicked some people are. They will mention your name and say, that one, don't talk that name in my presence. Don't mention her name in my presence. Because if you do, you could kill me. That's how deadly you are. You'll get to a point where even diseases know you. X-ray machines know you. MRI machines. If your body is there, the machine says, oh, oh this one. Say amen, somebody. Now, the story says, and there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and which, them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one of them. Because the man's shadow had the essence of the word that he had richly stored. So I said, when you hear the word, put it in your car, put it in your bedroom, put it on your phone, put it, you understand, put it everywhere. When you're going for a date and your boyfriend is delayed, you play. He finds you listening to something. We no longer have time. You who are flying out, when you sit on the flight, you tune, I am a poet. You sit in your business class. By the time you land on the ground, hallelujah, even the ground is says he has come. He has come. He has come. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Richly. And now listen to this. And when the hype saw it, he saw the miraculous. Verse 17 says, the high priest rose up and all that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, were filled with indignation, jealousy, envy, and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They got men who had the word that cannot be bound and put them in a prison. But <laughs> okay, let me say it in another way. They got a woman who cannot fall sick and put her in an area of sickness. <laughs> they got a fellow who cannot be poor and they put him in a situation of poverty. How? Who cannot, does not. They got an African, put him in Brazil and told him not to be an African. Exactly. Now the Bible says, and the air of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life, the things that can't get you arrested now. I'm going to say something. You don't need to believe me because it might not directly be implied. But when you understand it, you will believe me. 
Now, listen. And when they that heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. They went teaching. But the high priest came, and they that were with him, and called the council together, and all the senate of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. So they get this everybody, and then they say, let us go get them so we can take them for trial or something. And the story says, but when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, listen to what the officials said. They said, the prison truly found we sat with all safety. All. And the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man. Kati, wait. 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 Think with me. Think with me. They get men of the word. Arrest this man of the word. The heavenly version is that an angel came. Eh? So, so the Bible says that an angel came and opened the what? The prison doors and broke them forth. The version of the gods is they put them in. We stood the whole night with all doors closed. One word and together. Somebody has looked at and understood me. Listen. The version of the apostles is that they were in prison, the men of the word. And the angel came, opened all the doors. The story doesn't say he blinded the soldiers. The story doesn't say he put the soldiers to sleep. The story doesn't say that he misled the soldiers to go outside for some minutes so he can open for the apostles. The Bible also doesn't say that when the angel opened, he also closed the doors. But the story that is said, we found God standing there. We found all the doors to the prison cell closed. But the men were not in. <laughs> is what God wants to do in your life. He's going to get you out of that thing that no scientist will explain how you got out. No physician will explain how you got up. No economy will explain how you get money. No education system will explain how you're wiser. Did you understand what I just said? Now, that's what I prophesy on your life. That the word of God is going to work in your life to an extent that there will be no physical evidence to explain your breakthrough. Receive it, brother. Receive it, woman of God. Take it. Did you understand what I just said? That's the power of the word. Now, to my version, I believe that there was a terrestrial and celestial conversation. A certain thing that made their bodies cut through iron bars. Because they have the word that divides and brings them out for God to tell people but when a man has my word, he doesn't need to open the doors to go out. When a woman has my word, she does not need prison keys to go out of prison. I believe when the angel came, their nature changed. They were metamorphosed. And they passed through doors as men without flesh. Otherwise, if it was any other way, there was no explanation. God literally had to pause eternal time. But the gods would say, from that night we stood to morning, no door was touched, and we did not hear any sound. But the men are out. Now I understand why Philip can dip a eunuch, get him out, and the Bible says he's found at Azotus possible. It's possible. 
it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. And the Bible says when Peter preached the gospel, 37th verse, 33rd, sorry, in that same chapter 5, the Bible says when they heard what was said, all saw them they were cut to the heart. But the Bible says these ones took counsel to slay him. So it cuts the one which believes and the one which doubts. They choose how to react to it, but it cuts them. It means even those who call you cult, they know you are deep. Even those who say, I doubt that man, they know inside of the inside that is deep. Because the word is true. No man can listen to this and say, that's a false minister. In his heart he knows. Because this one is sharper than any deception. When Paul lived his life, when the apostles lived their life and saw what Jesus could do, Paul saw the beginning of the life of God and what the word could do. He taught everything there was. They saw signs, miracles and wonders. They saw the power of God. They saw the demonstration of the Spirit. They changed the world and wrote history. And in his last days of life, he gets to the church and says, Now finally, brethren, I commend you to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance amongst them that are terrified. He says, This is the only thing I can leave you with this one. You'll vault high faces. You'll run through troops. You'll conquer nations. You'll write history. You will change the world. You will not live a normal life. He says, this is the thing I can commend you. The word of his grace. This is Acts 20, when the man is finishing. He says, this is the only thing we have proved that can work. Tell your neighbor, the word of God never fails. Tell your neighbor, he will never put you to shame. You will see everything the word says. And you'll experience the goodness of the word of God. Tell your neighbor, I see your future is bright. And I see your inheritance as the word of God builds you up into a fortification built and established by God immovable unshakable in Jesus mighty name say amen and he likened that to the man who built his house on the rock he that hears my word and doeth it. He says he's likened to a man who built his house on a rock. And he says, and the rain descended, the winds blew, and beat up that house. And the Bible says it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. They will come and go and leave you here. Stronger then you first believed. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Ancient words long preserved for our in this world every time we've got some heart oh let me send words yes and words ever changing me and 
say we have come to open heart oh let me send words to talk to God words of life words of hope you give us strength in the world where we're wrong that's the world of God in a poem ever true changing me and said we have come Oh, oh, send word deeper, hey, send word, oh, my faith, turn it down, down to the day, send word to sacrifice, oh, he the faithful words of life, it's a word, ever true, that's changing me, oh, we have come, oh, oh, let me get the word. The Lord told me something years ago. And he said that I'll confirm my presence with he said, not above, confirm my presence with you by the spirit of revelation and he says as you're speaking men will be filled with power as you're speaking the lamb will walk on the blind sea as you're speaking the anointing of the holy spirit will touch men and i've seen that over the years as i'm preaching that sometimes or many times as i'm preaching the gospel those words come with the power and they hit the human spirit and change the destiny even as i'm preaching right now i feel it I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Oh! My God. Marando Revolution. Si kerere. Zorra ba 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 ba. Serire le 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 bo. Zorra katara ba ba ba. Zorra ra ba 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 ba. I still feel it. I still feel it. I still feel it. Somebody raise your hands. Raise your hand. Start to receive it now. Start to receive it now. Start to receive the anointing now. Receive the anointing that changes things. Receive the anointing that changes situation. Receive the anointing that changes season. Receive the anointing that changes hours. Receive the anointing that changes time. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. And I feel there is more. I feel it. I feel more is being released, more is being released, more is being released, more is being released, more is being released. May your jobs change, may your careers change, may your finances change, may your life change, may your ministries change, may your dreams be uplifted and elevated in the name of Jesus. May favor follow you in the mighty name of Jesus. May results work through you in ways that never before received man of God. Somebody say, I receive it. I receive it. If you're sick in your body, receive healing now. Receive it now. And I declare, I declare that many of you listening to me today, you will speak things, and as you're speaking, the evidence of the power of God 
will be operative on your life. Even in the simplest conversations, the evidence of the operation of the power of God will operate on your life. Even on tea, men will be slain on tables with them. You speak the simplest thing and they'll come with a heavy grace and anointing of power. And that power will change destiny. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And now I want you to take just seconds and make some declarations right now because the word of God says so and strike once deal with that issue now speak to it now if it's a disease tell it HIV this is the last time you will live in my body on the 23rd of January 2020 poverty luck struggle strife pain suffering any manner of testation judge it now and tell it this is the last time I address you and never be back again if you believe what you've said shout amen you say life and death and the power of the tongue now I want you to clap for Jesus like something wonderful happened in your life clap like something wonderful happened in your life Clap like something wonderful happened in your life. I say clap like something wonderful has happened in your life. Clap as one who has had a single strike and that it has cut through. This time it's working. I don't know the other times you've prayed, but this time it is working. In Jesus' name, say amen. I feel the grace that changes family. The Lord has just said it. If there is something you want to see in your family, mention it now in this atmosphere. And let it ascend to heaven now. Just mention it. Mention it. The angelics are here. The Spirit of God is here. Mention something in the atmosphere for your family, for your household, that you want to see this year. God says it's done. Single strike. Single strike, single strike, single strike, single strike. If you're here and you've never given your life to Christ and you want to receive him as your Lord and Savior, repeat these words after me. Say Lord Jesus, I have heard your word. I have believed it. And now tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Scenario Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at scenariocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.scenario.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.